back to another very special edition of the Crossboard Interviews with Christopher Brown. Today I'm flying solo. That's right. It's just me talking about one subject for about a half hour, 45 minutes, depending on how long I can talk about the subject. And today's subject is the first of what is expected to be many leadership leaders debates in the Ontario provincial election. This is the first one that is being held inside the writ period. The writ was dropped earlier this, or it was issued for those political nerds who are listening to this, issued earlier in this year, a month, and we are week two of the election period. Today's, uh, or yesterday's, I should say, leadership race debate was hosted by the Northern Ontario Municipality Association, and it was hosted by a CBC reporter up in Northern uh, Ontario. Four major candidates did come into the race, did come into the debate, and they were Ontario Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca, uh, Ontario Progressive Conservative leader Doug Ford, Ontario NDP leader Andrew Horvath, and Green Party of Ontario leader Mike Schreiner. All four candidates went into the debate tonight in their first showdown as four. The last women's issues debate that was held pre-writ issuing was only attended by the three major parties, the Green Party of Ontario, Mike Schreiner, Andrea Horvath, the Ontario NDP leader, and Stephen Del Duca, the Ontario Liberal leader. So these candidates got together on stage in Northern Ontario to talk about what? Northern issues. They range from what the working relationship with each of the parties and Northern Ontario municipalities would look like, taxation, nursing, firefighters, uh, Airbnb, water homes. So there was many discussions tonight on lots of issues and even highways, which we'll get into because I think there was a zinger of the night. But overall, they were heavily on the Northern Ontario issues, which is understandable because it was being held at the Northern Ontario Municipality Organization or, or Association, however you want to call it, NOMA Annual Conference in Nisiping. Nisiping is currently held by the Progressive Conservatives. Vic Bedeldi is the current, I think he, I just want to make sure I get this right here. He is currently the president of the Treasury Board. So he is well established and he was the interim leader when Patrick Brown stepped down. So this was a very PC friendly night. So as you can imagine, most of the applause that happened tonight came from, or I should say uh, yesterday, because I'm recording this literally moments after watching the hour and a half debate. So most of the applause, the loudest applause of the nights came for Premier Doug Ford, Ontario PC leader Doug Ford, which is not surprising because the uh, northern, central north uh, area of Ontario, the ridings are traditionally strongholds for the progressive conservatives. So I was not expecting anything different than that. There's a few takeaways I want to talk about tonight. And we were going to dive into some of the issues later on. We're going to set up with clips. And then we're going to go into the actual issues. But I want to start with the takeaway. This is the first time a lot of people were actually getting introduced to some of the candidates. Mike Schreiner, the Green Party of Ontario leader, was a relatively small voice in a big pond in Queen's Park for the last four years. The Green Party made their first breakthrough in Ontario politics in 2018, winning the riding of Guelph with Mike Schreiner. They focused heavily on that riding because they thought they could win. Liz Sandals, former education minister under uh, Kathleen Wynne, retired. Then randomly, uh, there was another candidate for the Liberals, wasn't well known, and Mike Schreiner was able to sneak out a win because the Liberals' vote collapsed and they swung heavily to the Green Party. Will they be able to keep that up? Will they be able to expand? This was the night that we could tell. And I will give my initial reaction, which is he did as well as I thought he was going to do. There wasn't a lot of pressure on Mike Schreiner, the leader of the Green Party of Ontario, to shine tonight. There wasn't a lot of pressure on him to win tonight's debate by showing up by being invited to the debate it is a win for him no matter what because it puts the green party of ontario on a new playing field with the other major parties 
the other candidate that I wanted to sort of focus in on tonight, and that's going to be one that I, I think is, I'm going to be watching throughout the entire uh, election. And I will be up front. Let's just put this out on the table right now. I used to work for the Ontario Liberals. I used to canvas for the Ontario Liberals. I worked at Queen's Park. I am a staffer for the Ontario Liberals. So I, I, I just putting that out there. So please do not hesitate. Don't hesitate to say you're a liberal hack because I've been called works this week from NDP people here in Alberta. I'm going to be honest. Stephen Del Duca, I could barely remember him from my time in uh, Ontario politics. I know he became an elected official later on after I did leave the Ontario Liberals uh, staffing. So I wasn't fully shocked that his performance was one note. And I mean that with all respect. He's a great guy. He probably does well. He the personality wasn't there, and Doug Ford was able to steamroll him in a few cases, especially with his time as Minister of Transportation under Kathleen Wynne. So, I wouldn't be surprised that if uh Stephen Del Duca and the Ontario Liberals regroup after the night, sort of relax. And try to refocus for that major debate that's going to be happening later on this month where they will be debating full issues across all of Ontario. And that's going to be hosted, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in downtown Toronto. Hopefully, knock on wood, we'll have live coverage from that as well. I I want to start off by saying tonight, today's episode is going to be a little bit different, as I've already started into it. But I want to say that... We're going to periodically bring in some clips from the actual debate. So that way you can hear from the candidates. We'll talk about some of the big zingers of the night. We'll talk about some of the things that went right, some things that went wrong, where the leaders did well, where the leaders need to do a little bit better, and why some leaders still believe that a debate stage is exactly like question period. We saw that in the federal uh, conservative leadership debate hosted by Candace Strong and Free. We saw that... Similar in tonight's or yesterday's debate with the Ontario uh, Leaders debate with Andrea Horvath answering the first two questions about taxation and uh, partnering with Northern Ontario municipalities. It seemed like she was very much on the stump and she was very much talking to the people um, at Queen's Park and across the aisle. There was no engagement and I was very shocked at that. So without further ado, we're going to hit a quick break here. And then right afterwards, we're going to jump into the highlights of the night. And I say that with some hesitation because I will be honest, there wasn't that many highlights of the night. So we will be right back after this quick message from our sponsors. And we'll be talking about the highlights of the Ontario Leaders Debate, Northern, Northern Ontario edition. Calgary, Edmonton, Vegreville, St. Albert, Drumheller, Medicine Hat, Fort McMurray, and Peace River. These are some of the communities this show has been heard in. By advertising with us, your advert will be heard by countless Albertans and Canadians. Visit the link in the show notes to advertise with us today. Welcome back. So one of the biggest uh, takeaways from tonight, and one of the biggest hits of the night, came from Premier Doug Ford, Ontario PC leader Doug Ford, I should say, I should correct that. I'm probably going to mess that up a few times here at the edition, the tonight's, uh, today's episode, so please bear with me, I do apologize. But one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest uh, slams of the night, came from Ontario PC leader Doug Ford, and I want to just play a quick bite. Uh, courtesy of Kojiko, so there's going to be a little note on there. If you listen to this audio, uh, please note that it is from Kojiko. Uh, we took it from the, the YouTube channel, and hopefully we don't get dinged with a YouTube uh, algorithm hit, but I just want to make sure that everyone knows that this is sourced from Kojiko, who broadcast the debate uh, t- Tuesday night. So here's the quick, quick clip that I want to talk about. So I've driven these roads in the north, in the, in the far north, and it's terrifying going down those roads, especially in the winter. This year alone, this year alone, we're doing the largest investment in Ontario history of $640 million in widening roads and twinning roads. We're rebuilding highways 101, 
uh, through Timmins, twinning Highway 17 from Kenora to Manitoba. We're twinning Highways 11 and 17 between Thunder Bay and Nepagon, widening Highway 69 between Perry Sound and Sudbury, building Ontario's first ever two plus one highway to improve Highway 11. Mr. Del Duca, you had your opportunity and you failed. You were the Minister of Transportation. You didn't build absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. We made sure that Ontario has consistently beat our snow clearing targets and including last year we achieved 98 percent of provincial standards. Mr. Del Duca, that was that you, we doubled your, your performance. One in every four highway contract area did not meet the provincial standards. You were failing as the Minister of Transportation. You weren't building highways. You weren't clearing the snows. They were more dangerous under your watch. Folks, we're going to build highways. We're going to get it done. We're going to make sure those roads are cleared throughout the winter. So as you can imagine, um, Del Duca is relatively unknown in this election. Not a lot of people remember him from the previous uh, uh, liberal government under Kathleen Wynne as the transportation minister, but this hit him where it hurt. Del Duca's biggest issue in this campaign is trying to introduce himself, and Doug Ford has the ability to attack in a way that not a lot of uh, leadership candidates and leaders can do. Attack without really being attacking. And this is the perfect clip which I want to talk about, where he basically says you didn't get it done, and he didn't. As an Ontario Liberal, I'll be honest, they did start a lot of projects, they did put a lot of money into infrastructure, into roads, but in Northern Ontario, the Liberals have always had a, sm a small issue. Outside of that Thunder Bay, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, they traditionally don't do well. And I will be honest, I think a lot of uh, parties will be honest when they say parties during budgets, during press conferences, tend to give money to where their voters are. So that way they can keep those votes in the next election. So with Doug Ford attacking Stephen Del Duca over his time as Minister of Transportation and saying he didn't get it done, it was a good, clean swipe. I think it's going to be the quote of the night. I think you're going to hear it from a lot of people over the next few days. And Stephen Del Duca didn't really have a good response to it. And that's my issue. You had to be prepared to have a, an attack like this come at you. And the fact that Stephen Del Duca didn't, it concerns me that they weren't prepared that the Andrea Horvaths, the Doug Fords, the Mike Shriners were not going to come for him and they were just going to spar against each other. The, the clear path to a majority government for Doug Ford is keeping that liberal vote down and keeping the NDP where they are. How to do that is stop the bleed to the liberals, stop the bleed from the NDP to the liberals, and he kind of plugged a bit of that hole tonight. Will it stick? I don't know. Will we see some potential of a uh, more stronger liberal uh, leader in the next debate where everyone's going to be tuning in because it'll be broadcast on probably all major news stations across Ontario. Yes, Stephen Del Duca is going to have a line. The issue is the news in the next few days, today, tomorrow, into the weekend, is going to be this clip. You didn't get it done. Stephen Del Duca lost this one, and he lost it bad. Because if, if you're someone who's trying to introduce yourself to the voters who doesn't don't really know you, who don't really care about the third party, candidates unless you're a name candidate like Justin Trudeau when you have a bad news cycle you have a bad news cycle and this was a bad news cycle and it's going to be a bad news cycle for Stephen Del Duca now he's going to be trying to make sure he gets that back you could see that his fighting style kind of came out at the end of the night I don't think it did as well as he thought it was going to do, uh, as it was. I thought it was going to be, because the entire time Stephen was talking, the entire time Stephen was on TV, there was no real mojo. 
I felt like I was in university again, I <laughs> being instructed by my professor. There wasn't really anything I could say, yo, I, I agree with that, or I don't agree with that. It faded into the background. So Doug Ford's game, biggest play of the night, goes to Doug Ford for that one-line zinger on Stephen Del Duca. And you could tell, yet again, it was a more PC-friendly atmosphere that it went over well with the audience members. So I'm giving it to Doug Ford tonight for that major uh, hit on the, uh, the liberal leader. For the Liberals tonight, the biggest win for them was, and I, and I hate to be rude, was his closing statement. He spoke about, throughout the entire thing, there was what the NDP, what the PCs, what the Ontario Liberals are going to do. We got to see a personal side of Stephen Del Duca, and you, you relatively don't see that too often from Ontario politicians. Delta McGinty wasn't well into bringing out his family. Kathleen Wynne, openly lesbian, uh, did bring Jane, her wife, around a lot. But I don't remember Mike Harris. I don't remember Ernie Eves bringing his family, their families, out and talking about them. Stephen Del Duca's last closing statement was his big night his big notice of the night i i'm shocked a bit that it took an hour and a half until he had a good moment but that was his saving grace we got to see who he was we, he talked about his two kids we talked he talked about his uh, parents who are thank god living uh, still by themselves he talked about what he wanted to get done and throughout the night's debate, I didn't really get that until that last five minutes, which I'm hoping, maybe a little bit naively, that his last five minutes is going to be an election ad because, like many people, people tend to tune out in the first half hour of these debates. They see who they are, they see what's going on, and then they tune out. And I was shocked that it took them that long to actually bring it in. So I'm just going to play a quick brief moment of this yet again, brought to you by Kojiko. Um, so here's Stephen Del Duca talking about his family in that closing remark. Wife and I are raising two daughters. They're in grade nine and grade five, attending publicly funded schools where we live. I think about my parents. Mom and dad came from different parts of the world like so many Canadians. They're in their 80s now. They're aging. They're still at home, thank goodness. They do experience some challenges from time to time. I think about the magic of Ontario, where we all, each and every successive generation, has a fundamental obligation to honor the sacrifice and the leg legacy of those who came before us, our parents and grandparents who gave us everything, built everything for us, and to honor that sacrifice by setting up the next generation for success. And The next leader I want to talk about here for a few minutes is Andrea Horvath, leader of the Ontario NDP, leader of the official opposition. She has a very hard task right now because the, with the Liberals rising in the polls, some polls saying that they're above the NDP, some polls putting them equal footing as the NDP, the NDP and Andrea Horvath had a very hard line that they had to walk. They had to acknowledge the fact that Stephen Del Duca is in the room, but they also had to make sure that people knew that they were the government in waiting. And they had a hard time doing that until one quick moment. And I, I want to give her credit where credit's due. Andrew Horvath has been around the block when it comes to uh, debates. In 2018, she had a fantastic debate against Kathleen Wynne and Doug Ford. That would have put her on the path to premier sh the premiership if some of the candidate issues did not come out, which they did, which cost her the election. That's my personal opinion. Quote me if I'm wrong. But tonight, she stayed subdued. She attacked when she needed to, but she held back where she wanted to because she wanted to seem like the statesman in the group, which, which kind of she is because there are four, three other men on the stage and not a lot of men want to talk over top of other uh, women right now due to some misogynist issues. So 
they held back. So you saw Andrea Horvath be able to finish sentences, which gave her time to actually talk. But the issue with Andrea Horvath, and I mentioned this in the opening for a bit, Andrea Horvath's issue is she's always on. There was no personal personality. There was no connection. There was no emotion. It was, here's the script. I'm repeating what I remember, and we're going from there. People want to see actual human emotion. And maybe it's uh, my back, my time back in Ontario covering politics. Howard Hampton, Bob Ray, they were amazing at connecting with the pert voter. Andrea Horvath tonight, or yesterday, sorry, didn't seem like she was connecting with the voter too much. But what she did do, and this is the, I give her credit, she always made sure she was going back to what she was talking about. She always pivoted to a moment on the campaign trail, talking to a mayor, talking to whatever, talking to uh, about an issue that's important to them, talking to about an issue that's important to uh, Northern Ontarians. And she did it with a subtle nod of saying, I don't like the premise of the question. I'm going to take it and go somewhere else. It did seem a little contrite a lot of the times with her talking and talking and talking and talking and going, you didn't answer the question, but I'm glad you answered that question. So I give her credit where credit's due because she was able to pivot on a dime and talk about an issue that she's more passionate about. The area that I think she won is... Her attacks against Stephen Del Duca, you could tell that tonight's debate with Ford and Horvath, tonight's debate was, let's gang up on Stephen Del Duca. She always mentioned you had 15 years to do it. Technically, Stephen Del Duca wasn't in power for 15 years, but understandable, the liberals were. Four years with the PCs, 11 years with the, or a little bit longer than 11 years with the liberals. So I give her credit. So we're going to play a quick, uh, brief uh, clip from Andrew Horvath, the big win of the night. So here it is, quick, brief moment yet again. Thank you, Kojiko. I apologize if we're not allowed to use it. If you do, please, and I'll take it down. And I respect your wishes. But courtesy of Kojiko, here we go. Municipalities have had a raw deal, and particularly in the north, that's really hurt because a lot of your budgets are very small because your population bases are also very small. Uh, with the downloading that the Conservatives started in the 90s and that the Liberals uh, didn't deal with in, after 15 years in government, uh, I know that it's tough, and I know that it's tough to get those culverts and bridges and roads in good repair. And I also know a lot of municipalities aren't able to provide for their residents the kinds of uh, amenities that uh, people want to see in their communities, things like the hockey arena, uh, things like the community center <coughs> where, uh, where kids can get exercise, where seniors uh, can get some uh, socialization. Those things are important to communities. And when I think about what needs to happen in northern communities, uh, I also think about the cost of housing. And I think we all know that the affordability of housing is out of control. Mike Schreiner, Mike Schreiner, Mike Schreiner, Mike Schreiner, Green Party of Ontario leader first time on the stage with all four candidates he was a small fish in a big pond in queens park but he punched above his weight and tonight was no different there was a few times he went on a, a tangent but i give him credit because he was able to hold his own during the debate and the one thing i saw about mike schreiner and god bless him because he was the first one to lay a Physical punch, not a physical, a, uh, a uh, verbal punch onto Doug Ford. And you could tell Doug Ford was angry, was pissed at it. Mike Schreiner point blank asked Doug Ford about nursing and the costs that come with it and potentially removing the cap on how much nurses get paid. And Doug Ford was not prepared for this question. You could tell in his face he was not prepared for this question because he pivoted like there was no pivot tomorrow. Like if the, he, he did a 180 degree pivot and he started walking the other way and talking about, I don't know what, but you could tell that he was not too happy with it. So I want to bring, play a brief mess, a brief clip yet again, sponsored by Kojiko or brought to you by Kojiko. So 
let's just check this out for a second because you can tell the moment that Doug Ford knows that he did not prepare for this question. I will give the Mr. Ford credit. He came to my riding in Guelph and we opened Medline, which is going to supply more uh, PPE. But now I'm going to ask Mr. Ford, will you stand up for nurses and PSWs and frontline healthcare workers and commit to removing the wage restraint on them? Because we've all four all right. called we'll them let, we'll heroes. We'll let Doug Ford respond Can to that. Do because that? Can we do that? We're going Work over here. together on that one, Marcus. Go ahead, Mr. Ford. Would you like to respond? Well, I'd love to respond. We have a strong plan. We're the only government that has a plan. We created 3,100 more acute care beds than we've ever had. We're investing 40 billion, with a B, $40 billion, building new hospitals and re revamping hospitals right across this pro province. We have never, ever seen that. So there we go. So I just want to make sure that you know, Doug Ford is a master debater. He, he can debate with the best of them, and he is great at it. That one clip showed me that he has some vulnerabilities, and if Mike Schreiner continues, he might be able to pick up two, three seats at the expense of the PCs. Maybe that Kitchener Center, maybe Perrystown, Muskoka, which they seem to be wanting, maybe uh, University Rosedale, maybe our former past guest, uh, Amarjeet um, Manley, in Beaches East York. Sorry, I just had to make sure that I got that right. Uh, so if Mike Schreiner does what he did yesterday at the next debate, there is a possibility that you could see a little bit of a lump. Yet again, will that translate to votes? I don't know. But it would be interesting to see if Mike Schreiner can bring what he had done there and continue it on. So, it was a good night for all four debates, for all four candidates. They all had their good things. Um, right afterwards, we've, we've a bit talked about it already. But we're going to end with a bit of all the closing statements because I want to give you an opportunity to hear from the candidates themselves. Yet again, we'll come back. We'll do the quick introduction uh, for each of the candidates, and then we'll go into the actual uh, what they said at the next debate. So with that, we'll be right back after the sponsor break. So talk to you soon. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to Patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. So welcome back yet again. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, so as I said at the before the commercial break, there we're going to quickly jump into all the closing statements because I want to just give them uh, some credence because I think that everyone has the right to listen to them. And I know for my Alberta listeners, you're probably going, "Why the hell are you listening? Why the hell are you playing Ontario politicians' uh, messages on an Alberta podcast?" Well, we're not technically Alberta podcast. We're a what should we call it? Canadian podcast where we talk about Canadian politics from coast to coast to coast. So this is the first one in our new format where we're talking about the provincial election and we're talking about the Ontario election uh, leadership uh, debate. We're going to be doing the same in Quebec. We're going to be doing the same in Alberta next year. So uh, suck it up <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but let's start with Doug. F Actually, we'll do in the order that they did. So we'll start with Green Party of Ontario leader Mike Schreiner's closing statements. Here it is yet again, uh, courtesy of Cochico. Well, thank you, Marcus, and thank you to the Federation of Ontario, uh, Northern Ontario Municipalities for hosting this debate today. And I want to thank my colleagues for being a part of the democratic process and all of you for being a part of the democratic process. We need new solutions to old problems. We cannot afford to wait to address the challenges we face. When I walked into this debate hall, I walked through a line of nurses. They're the backbone of our healthcare system. And they want a wage increase. Like their wages have been capped at 1% when inflation is 6%. Like imagine, that's the backbone of public health care. We have to treat the people who care for us with the dignity and respect and the wages they deserve. That's what building a caring society looks like. We have to build connected communities where people can actually afford to live in the community they love, near where they work, so they're not forced into long, expensive commutes, so they can spend time with their family and their friends. We need to be ready 
for the new climate economy because Northern Ontario can lead it. Northern Ontario can lead it in mining and mining to manufacturing strategy and forestry. We can retrofit buildings to help you save money by saving energy and create thousands of jobs in the construction and trades in the north. But we have to start voting for new solutions and a new party who can deliver on that. And we know that that's what Ontario Greens are doing because we know that's the northern Ontario you want to build. And we're ready to provide the leadership to build the Ontario you want. Now we'll go over to Andrea Hordbath, who has her two-minute closing statement. And yet again, courtesy of Kojiko. Um, so here we quickly go. Thanks very much, Marcus. Uh, I just want to say straight up that my commitment to Northerners has never wavered and it will never waver. You deserve your fair share and we together can make sure that the things that have been broken uh, will be fixed, like hallway uh, and highway medicine. We're going to hire 300 doctors, 100 specialists, make sure healthcare workers are able to come to the north and serve your communities. We're going to fix, as I mentioned, the Northern Health Travel Grant, so down to 14 days guaranteed. We're going to take action on the mental health crisis that you're facing, deal with folks who are suffering uh, with addictions. The opioid crisis is, has got to been, be dealt with and we know we can tackle that crisis. And we will be providing mental health services with your OHIP card, not your credit card. We will deliver broadband by 2025 in all Ontario communities, unlike the broken promise of, of Mr. Ford, uh, and, and not with just big fish companies that are the buddies uh, of Doug Ford, with the small and medium-sized providers as well. Jobs that pay the bills, training for workers so that the next generation of Northerners can stay here and build a great life here. We will absolutely bring the Northlander into service. We've been fighting this since 2012 when the Liberals cancelled it. It needs to be reinstated. And we need to do all of these things with the needs of Francophone communities at the top of mind and the inherent rights of Indigenous peoples and communities uh, as, as part of our process. My commitment to you is very clear. Instead of having a Premier that works for his buddies, you can have a Premier that works for you. And I think it's high time that that happens for Northern Ontario. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Miigwech. Second last, the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservatives. Here's his closing statement of get her or done. Thank, thank you so much. And I, I want to thank my colleagues here on the stage. I want to thank the moderators. And I especially want to thank uh, everyone watching on TV. The choice the voters uh, face, it couldn't be any clearer here in Northern Ontario or across the province, has never been more clear. If you want more excuses, more delays, more talk, and more taxes, I'll tell you folks, you have a lot of choices, a lot of options in this election. You can either choose the Liberals that want to take us back, or you can vote for the NDP that want to hold us back. But if you want to get it done, you have one choice, and that's the Ontario PCs. We're the only party with a real plan, a real vision to build Northern Ontario and the rest of the province. A real plan to build highways and key infrastructure, including right here in Northern Ontario. A real plan to keep costs down in Northern, for Northern families and put money back into your pocket instead of the government's pocket. Friends, it's time to get it done. It's time to get it done for Northern families and business who rely on high-speed internet. And by the way, the bids that went out, we're getting that built, and that's going to be done by 2025, high-speed internet right across this province, $4.2 billion. It's time to get it done by investing in highways like Highways 101 and Highway 17. It's time to get it done by bringing back the Northlander that both the NDP and Liberals cancelled. And it's time to get it done by building the road to the ring of fire. We're the only party with a team that has a vision and has a plan. On election day, on June the 2nd, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you, and we're going to get it done. Thank you. And last but not least, I want to give, uh, I know we played a few minutes of it, a few seconds of it earlier on in the show, but I want to give it its full credence. So here's two minutes with uh, Ontario Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca, or he kept on calling it throughout the night, which I found quite interesting, the Ont new Ontario Liberals. Uh, so I don't know what that meant, but I give him credit for trying to rebrand himself. So here it is, Stephen Del Duca, Ontario Liberal leader's two-minute closing statements from the Ontario 
Northern Municipalities Associations debate. Well, thanks very much, Marcus. Great job, as always, uh, moderating. I want to thank Phnom, Noma, everybody who's here with us today, and of course, those who are watching from home. So I'm going to finish out my remarks today. I didn't get the chance to talk about this earlier. Just to give you a quick understanding of why I'm here, why I'm in this fight, why I came back to politics. I think often about my family on this campaign trail. My wife and I are raising two daughters. They're in grade nine and grade five, attending publicly funded schools where we live. I think about my parents. Mom and dad came from different parts of the world like so many Canadians. They're in their 80s now. They're aging. They're still at home, thank goodness. They do experience some challenges from time to time. I think about the magic of Ontario, where we all, each and every successive generation, has a fundamental obligation to honor the sacrifice and the leg legacy of those who came before us, our parents and grandparents who gave us everything, built everything for us, and to honor that sacrifice by setting up the next generation for success. And I refuse to accept that my parents' sacrifice should be squandered and that my daughters should have less opportunity growing up in this province than I did a generation ago. That's why the new Ontario Liberal Plan will invest in publicly funded education everywhere. Grade 13 is an option, smaller class sizes, better school buildings, health care, in particular seniors care, that lets people like my parents and many of you here in this room stay at home for life and have real dignity, puts workers and their families at the center of the decision-making processes that we make, and supports the mom-and-pop small business entrepreneurs that give all of our communities the character that we love. This is a positive, forward-looking plan for Ontario's future, for Northern Ontario's future, and you have my commitment that I will work as hard as I can, relentlessly in fact, to deliver the kind of Ontario I want my daughters to grow up in, I want your kids and grandkids to grow up in. You have my word that I will be relentless in the pursuit of this progress for every part of Ontario, including, of course, the North. Thank you very much for having me here today. So my final thoughts on tonight is this. Doug Ford was the clear winner tonight. No one really, well, outside of Mike Schreiner, no one laid a hand on that man. He attacked Del Duca. Horvath attacked Del Duca. Schreiner attacked Ford. Del Duca attacked Ford, but didn't really lay a punch. So Ford came out the winner of this debate. The loser of the debate, I have to, I have to apologize, but it was a tie between the two progressive wings of, on that stage, the Ontario NDP's leader, Andrea Horvath, and the Ontario Liberal leader, Stephen Del Duca. By not being able to land a punch against Doug Ford, they wasted an opportunity to actually attack. Now, this is relatively a small market that they talk to. There's only a few hundred, a few, uh, probably a dozen or two dozen seats in Northern uh, Ontario. The biggest chunk of votes is Ottawa, Kitchener, Brampton, Ontario, Durham region, where you're going to see a lot more sparks. So if Stephen Del Duca and Andrew Horvath have the same night they had Tuesday night at the main debate later on during the election, game over, Doug Ford's going to majority government. And I know my progressive friends out there are probably flipping their lids right now at me saying that, but Doug Ford needs to be attacked. I listen to the curse of politics every morning, and I know I shouldn't talk about another politics, but if you don't listen to that one, David Hurley, Jenny Byrne, Scott Reed, I would highly recommend you go over there because they give a great recap of every single uh, uh, day of the election. Scott Reed said it best, and I, I say that with all respect to Scott Reed because he's a great guy, probably. I've never met him, but he's probably a great guy. To win this election, you have to start attacking. And tonight, there wasn't that much of an attack. Schreiner got in a punch. Del Duca tried to get in a punch, but it didn't land. So if they want to win, as fortunately as I hate to go negative, you have to go negative and start telling people why you shouldn't vote for Doug Ford instead of telling people why you should vote for you. I know that's giving up the high ground, but sometimes you have to give up the high ground to win. So with that... With that um, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I know this is really rough, Sean. Uh, we're trying to get better at this whole 
one person, one interview, talking about myself, just talking off the cuff because I don't like scripts. I don't like other podcasts that are scripted. And I appreciate uh, people who actually are willing to talk from the heart instead of giving you the scripted answers. So with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow. Actually, we'll be back later on today. Uh, we will be covering, yet again, another debate, <laughs> the Federal Conservative Party of Canada's actual English leaders debate is happening in Edmonton tonight, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time at 8.30. We're going live, live, live with all the results, all the results, all the pushbacks. We have some great pundits coming in to talk about that. So I highly recommend if you have some time, tune in. Uh, it'll be live via YouTube. We don't do Twitter spaces. I just don't know how to do it. So I'll be the first to admit that. So tune in via YouTube and we will be sure to, uh, give you some great coverage. And I promise we will not have the giggles as much as we did for the first unofficial conservative leadership debate. So with that, my name is Christopher Brown, the host of the cross board interviews with Chris Brown, reminding you, reminding you. Get out from behind your phone. Have a conversation with somebody, whether it be someone of the different political spectrum, whether it be someone of a different political leaning, whether it be someone that you have never met. Have a conversation with them because you can't imagine how far people will go to not have a conversation with someone. And we need to stop that. We need to start having conversations with each other like we used to before the rise of social media. So get off the phone, drop what you're doing, go talk to someone you haven't talked to in some time, go talk to someone you don't know, and have a conversation and enjoy yourself. So with that, thank you for tuning in. We will be back tonight, and then we'll be posting the uh, live or the audio recording of it tomorrow morning. Have yourself an excellent rest of your day, guys, and talk to you later. Thank you.